As the old saying goes, if the trailer be rockin', the wheels best be chalkin'. Hey folks, welcome back to another video on Life on Our Time. Today I'm going to be talking about wheel chocks. And the biggest thing with trailers and setting them up in a campground is getting the trailer as secure as possible. Not only with your stabilizers that you drop, but also with your wheels. So it's not just side to side motion and bouncing motion, but it's that front and back motion that, uh, that stabilizers just doesn't do a really good job on. So early on in our trailer ownership, I did invest in a set of wheel chocks. And these are the ones I went with right here. So with these ones, you'll notice they're quite wide. There's different kinds of them. There's wide ones and then there's much narrower ones. And it all depends on what your axle spread is. We have a wide axle spread. Our axles are a secure stance. So there's a lot more distance between the tires. So these ones, and there's probably other brands but these ones I bought on Amazon are BAL Extend Fit X Chalk. And I not only went with one, but I went with two. And I think it's important to go with two and not just one. It's not only for the overall trailer movement forward and backward, but if you wheel chalk on one side and you don't on the other, you've you still get a chance of a bit of rotational movement. You've got one locked and the other one is still free-flowing and free-moving. So you can still get that uh, little bit of movement. For the sake of another one, um, it was definitely worth purchasing. These ones, I've had them about five years now. I think I paid about 50 bucks each. I did look on Amazon and they seem to be a little more expensive than that now. But in my opinion, they're an absolute must. They're a really good investment to make and all the stuff that you got to get with your RV and as we all know there's a lot of things that you got to add on or you like to add on once you do own an RV so uh, wheel chocks is uh, one of the top things that I do recommend to anybody that's camping so when I do install the wheel chocks for me I put them with the screw up screw head on the bottom and the reason for that is because of the skirting on our trailer um, to turn it the other way you'd be reaching way up underneath and that's going to be too challenging so I do go upside down with them the only thing to keep in mind is your rotation is different clockwise to uh, tighten counterclockwise to loosen when you're upside down you gotta flip your brain around with that too now some people just use wedges they'll wedge in the front and wedge in the back I like to use a wedge uh, depending on which way the trailer is uh, on grade so let's say we're pointing uphill from rear to front of the trailer then I'll put my wedges on the back I'll let my trailer roll back a bit so they are tight against that wedge um, if you're just using wedges you almost need to roll your trailer back a little further and then jam wedges in the front to pack them in to pack them in as tight as possible because if you don't do that even if you come up tight with one set of wedges the wedges on the other end are quite often just laying there and I see that at many campsites and many trailers you just drop them in it's a sense of security but um, it's not really going to stabilize your trailer from that forward and backward movement the other thing with wheel chocks is if you are coming into a site and you are on a grade put in your wedges get your trailer positioned unhook get yourself level first and then put your wheel chocks in because if you do it when your trailer's on, you know, if you're on any type of mild or even severe grade and you put wheel, your wheel chocks in and then you drop or raise your trailer, then your, your, um, your suspension is moving as part of that. So the actual physical distance between uh, one side of the tire and the other side of the other tire actually does change depending on how you pitch your RV forward or backward. So make sure you get yourself leveled off before you put your wheel chocks on. So let's go outside and I'll show you how these things get installed. So as I mentioned when I was inside, I do use these types of wedges and I will use those to stabilize. In this case, in our driveway, we're in a downgrade and I would typically use these in here. Unfortunately, 
I was in a rush when I brought the trailer in and you can always use in a pinch something like a piece of split firewood flat piece down in this case I put the fire piece of firewood down and then I let the truck roll forward in neutral so this tire puts a lot of pressure on here a lot of downward pressure so this isn't going to move but I certainly do recommend something more appropriate like these wheel wedges okay so let's get to the install here each wheel chalk does come with a ratcheting wrench it's a three quarter inch drive and you can easily change direction with a button really nice tool to be included with these so again for me with a secure stance we got the widespread on the axles I do have this uh, fender skirting so you know some people would put them in this way and that's fine but for me that's going to be kind of hard on the knuckles hard on the hands so I do install them generally upside down and when you do with them just take your take your feet and position them generally like this once you put them in the first time you loosen them up enough just to get them out so then you're pretty well on the mark there again depending on depending on how much grade you're on and how much you need to level your trailer you may have to do a little more adjustment with them so again counterclockwise clockwise Easy to flip direction. Sometimes you may need to wiggle them a bit just to keep all four pads seated evenly around. And you can hear that gripping on the tire, which is a good sound. And for me, I come onto them pretty hard. Usually I can tell or usually I just kind of keep an eye on the tread and as I tighten them you can see the tire starting to distort, distort a bit which is an indication of getting a good firm plant on it so they're on very solidly Let's give the trailer a little wiggle and see if these things are cracked up to be how much I'm bragging about. You can see right there I'm really coming onto that tire. Before installing it there's a lot of movement, a lot of rolling back and forth. Wheel chocks do a great job. Again, I do use these on both sides, and that way you maximize your stability. And of course, removal is just as easy. Change direction. Loosen them up just enough, and pull them out just like that. So tell me what you guys think. What are you guys using for stabilizing your trailer? in a situation like this. Are you using x chocks Are you using wood? Are you using uh, wedges? Firewood? Or nothing at all? Leave in the comments below. My final tip with wheel chocks is remember to take them out before you leave the campsite. I've never attempted it before of leaving them and trying to pull away. You're not going to get very far and if you put a lot of energy into moving your trailer when they're holding in there I'd be concerned with damage to uh, certainly to your wheel chocks but possibly even your tires on your RV so part of your circle check before you do pull away from a campsite that you do take them out particularly if you've got a big slide out like we do that goes out over those axles you may not be thinking that and if your slide is the last thing you pull in then your wheels may not be obvious to you but again always important to do that final circle check whenever you're leaving a campground and that way you won't forget about your wheel chocks. So I hope you found this video beneficial. If you did, please give us a thumbs up 
and please consider subscribing just click that red button and turn on the bell and you'll get the notifications turned on so then any videos I add to the channel you'll get prompted for them when they come out so have a great day and hopefully I'll see you at the campfire